this is René from Montreal and this is my second video about working with the OSVS. And today what we're going to do is compile the Fortran subroutines and store them in the library. Okay, so we want to write a job to do that kind of stuff. But before I go on with writing the job with you, I would like to come back to this uh, label uh, topic we discussed in the last video. Because this, this uh, video, I, the video, the previous video I did yesterday, and in the meantime, I shut down my DOSVS system, and it has some consequences. So if I look at the uh, store label job I had before, you know, uh, STOLBL. Now, the, uh, the option par std will store these uh, this label in the, on the system residence disk in the label cylinder you know, and it will stay there unless i delete it explicitly you know so what it means is if i shut down my system and re-ipl it's still going to be there but uh, this assignment we did here is going to be lost if i shut down the system so what it means now is that my label is there on the system, but the assignment is not there. And I need both to work with my uh, private library. So I need to reassign uh, this uh, logical unit here. Of course, uh, there are many ways to do that. So I could just run this job again, that would work. I could also put this uh, assignment at the beginning of the next job or the job we're gonna write uh, today. But instead of doing that, I'm going to assign manually this uh, logical unit on the system console, just to show you how we can do it, okay? So if I take a look at the reader queue we have on DOSVS, you can see that in the reader we have these uh, jobs starting with XX. These jobs are run at the beginning when we IPL the system, and they are there essentially to actually assign logical units but uh, there are also these pause jobs over there okay so a pause bg what what a pause bg job do it it does pause the, the it does nothing and just pause waiting for you to do something but the interest of such a job is that it's going to give you a bg prompt where you can enter commands and that's what I want to enter the command over there. You know, that assignment, I need to access BG to be able to assign manually the, uh, the logical unit. So let's do that. Let's clear this maybe, release from the reader, the job pause BG. And it's just pausing the, the, the partition. And I have, as you can see, this uh, prompt BG here, and I can, enter any command, valid command in a partition. For example, I can enter a list IO sys. That's going to list the, all the system logical units. And you can see that many are already assigned, but the sys RLB, you know, right here, this one is not assigned. You know, UA means unassigned. So I need to assign it. Okay. So I will do that. I just assign sysrlb x362. If I look again, then it's going to be assigned. Okay, 362. Then I'm done. So I just type return and that finished the job. Okay. And now my assignment <coughs> is done. So I can work with my library. Okay. Let's go back here. Before, again, I start to write this uh, job with you, I want to make a final comment regarding the labels. If you have a statement like this, you know, option par std, this will store the following uh, labels in the partition uh, standard labels on the system uh, residence disk. But not only will it store the labels, it will scratch all the labels already there. Okay, this is not a statement to add labels, it's the statement to store labels and destroy whatever it is over there. So if you have already, say, three labels stored 
in that place and you want to add this one you need to enter not only this one but the three you already have okay so keep that in mind all right so typically I do that I keep a job you know myself outside the USCS where I store all the labels I need and I run this job whenever I make an update of it okay so that's one thing let's clear this now we're ready to 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 create the job to catalog the uh, the Fortran subroutines I use the term catalog because on the OSVS cataloging a module means storing it in a, in a library uh, not to be confused with cataloging in a VSAM catalog you know so uh, we want to catalog the modules okay so let's create this job progressively together okay so I'm gonna call it uh, catmem <coughs> story catmem let me drink a little bit okay <coughs> catmem DOSVS first I need the job entry control language of power I have my macro for that catmem good then I start the JCL as such job catmem oh, not batmem but catmem catalog uh, fortran modules in private relocatable okay uh, let's put the end of the job right away all right uh, what do we have to do? <clears throat> if you want to catalog a module in a private library, you cannot ask the compiler to do that. On MVS, the compiler will do it, but on DOSVS, the compiler cannot store a module in a, in a library. To store a module in a library, you need a special program called the Librarian. Okay, so what we will need to do is to ask the compiler to produce a module or modules store those modules somewhere and then feed the library in with the modules that we have stored somehow okay so we need to store these modules somewhere and there are essentially two possibilities for us either we punch them as such and I guess it was the case it was possibly the case in the 60s or in the 70s that we, we would punch the modules on real physical cards then add the cards for the the librarian and feed the card reader with this new job to catalog the modules as, as such but we will not do that although it would be possible to do it or to simulate it on the, the emulated man frame what we were gonna do we're gonna use a tape instead so we're gonna store the modules on a tape and then rewind the tape and feed that tape as input to the library okay so what will happen is essentially the following let me uh, do it progressively again so I will have an instruction like this exec for to compile the first module and store it on tape then a second instruction to compile the second module and store it on tape then I will call the librarian the name of the program is mate to uh, catalog the modules I just punch uh, on the tape okay uh, that's fine <coughs> now I will put the uh, the source code of the, the, the routine right here in between these two uh, statements just at the end because this is a little bit uh, too uh, too long but of course it's not enough I need to tell the compiler that I want to produce a deck and not a, a special module for the link uh, editor so uh, I have to add an option here option deck remember option is a multi-purpose uh, statement and now I use it to provide an option to the compiler and of course I need the, the tape you know I need to connect the tape so what I'm gonna do when I do an option deck like this the Fortran compiler will punch the output 
or will produce the output for the system punch, okay? But what I want to do is reassign the system punch, which is the normal punch of the virtual machine, to a tape. Okay, but that can be done. So I'm in input mode. So I just assign the system punch to a tape. I have to, to give an address of a tape on DOSVS, the five pack of George Shedlock. There are tapes on 280 up to 287. So let's use 280 like this. Now, the punch has been reassigned to the tape, so each time I punch something, it will go on the tape. But of course, I have first to rewind the tape, so I can do that with a statement MTC, probably it means magnetic tape command or something like that. Rewind this PCH. Oh, whoop. All right, let's change this uh, CJ for CH. Okay. And now I'm almost done because this uh, librarian is going to be able to uh, store the modules, but he needs instructions to, the, uh, to that effect. So I have to tell the librarian, catalog this module with that name in the library, okay? So I need a statement, you know, that uh, a statement for the librarian and that statement the Fortran compiler cannot produce it. So I have to punch a statement before the module and I have to use another another way to punch this uh, this statement. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to use the uh, the assembler. So let me put myself in input mode again. I call the assembler assembly for a very uh, simple program that's got, just going to punch the instruction, okay? So maybe uh, Moshik can, uh, Moshik can uh, explain a little bit more about this, but it's gonna work. So I'm gonna punch this uh, sequence. Catal R catalog relocatable, the name of which is core. And I have to put this uh, blank here because the instructions for the, uh, the librarian has to be uh, to start in column two or at least column two, so it cannot start in the first column, okay? Uh, then this is just the, the only instruction in the assembler program. It will end and end of the input. Okay, so I can, I punch this instruction for the librarian, then I compile and that will punch the, the module. Uh, I'm still in input now. Uh, I have to put another one here exec assembly uh, let's go in column 10 punch catal r tolly like this okay uh, whoop. and this then okay and right there now uh, it's not over because I need to mark the tape, the end of the tape, okay? After I punch everything so that the, the librarian knows when it stops, you know, when it's over. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do MTC, uh, write a tape mark. Then I'm going to rewind the tape for the librarian. Rewind, that's this PCH. And at that point, I don't need the punch to be connected to the tape anymore. In fact, I don't want to because I want to connect the tape with the system input of that program. So I'm going to reset the punch, uh, syspch. And then I'm going to connect the tape with the system input for this program. Okay, so I'm going to assign sysipt to the tape. All right, save. Top. So let's review this. I first assign the tape to the punch. I rewind the tape. I punch this instruction, call the compiler to produce the module. Then I punch this another instruction, call the, instru the compiler again. When I'm done, I write a tape mark 
rewind the tape, reset the punch, assign the tape to the input for the librarian, and I run the librarian. So that, that should work. Of course, I need to provide now the, the source, the Fortran source over here. So let's do that. I'm going to do it at the end because these sources are quite long. So let's get uh, core Fortran. Okay, down, 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 down. Get Tolly Fortran. Good. Save. Now, I'm almost done with my job. I need to do something else because uh, for this job to work, the tape must be mounted, must be available to the system. Okay, this, I need a, a scratch tape, you know, to store these things. So, I need to create the scratch tape and mount it on the, on the virtual, connect it to the virtual machine. And this must be done before I run the job, okay? But I guess at the time when you you were submitting, you know, in the 70s, those jobs, uh, the, the guy who could mount the tape was the operator of the system. So you had to, to give instruction to that operator, telling him, mount a tape, you know, uh, mount this tape or do, do something for my job to run, essentially. So let's do that here, too, to help us. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to write some comments. These will appear on the console. Then I will pause the job, exactly like uh, this pause BG job, so that we can mount the tape. And when we are done mounting the tape, we're just going to type return on the console to let the job continue, okay? So let's do that. Input. So I will write, please uh, mount uh, scratch tape on 280 and type end of block or return and I'm gonna also pr provide a, a, some uh, advice <laughs> I will say answer uh, ignore to message 4172A if any <laughs> and this is not for the operator but maybe for me or for you because if you mount a brand new scratch tape, things should go uh, fine. But if you take an old scratch tape with already some stuff on it, it's possible that the system will look for a label on the tape and he's, he's not going to find it and he's going to complain about it. But you don't want a label anyway. A scratch tape is a tape without a label. So if you get that message, you just tell the system to ignore not trying to find a, a label and just proceed, okay? So, uh, but it, it could be that you run something like that at this moment, then you try to do it uh, in two months and you forgot about this uh, message and you don't know what to do. So that's a, that's a, a good thing to, to write what to do if you got a message of that kind. Then I'm gonna pause the job, okay? Uh, sorry, a P here. Okay. So well, that's good. Please mount scratch tape. I pause the J in the job. I will mount the scratch tape. When I'm done, I type return and the job should proceed uh, smoothly, uh, hopefully. Okay, so I think I'm done with this job here. It's pretty long, so let's file this right away. And let's try to submit this, uh, this job right away and cross the finger. <laughs> it's gonna work. <laughs> Uh, Catnam, that's the name. Good. So, the job is start. I, you see, I have these message. Please mount a scratch tape. Uh, ignore. And then you pause the job. And when the tape is mounted, I just have to type return here for the job to continue. Okay. But now I have to mount a scratch tape on 280. So, how to do this? First of all, I have to create the scratch tape. Okay, so this can be done with the Hercules uh, utility uh, at init. So at init dash n because I don't want a label. This is a scratch tape, and I can give it the name I want. So let's say tape 00 dot at 
So now I have a scratch tape, an empty, brand new scratch tape. I want first to connect this tape to Hercules, so the, the mainframe itself. Okay, so I go into the console, the Hercules console, and I the tapes tapes are available on 480, I believe. So let's dev in it uh, 480 tape like this. Now the tape is mounted on the uh, the mainframe. I want to connect now this tape to the virtual machine. Okay, so and I want to connect it to. Uh, 280 right there that's the virtual address on the virtual machine so I use now the attach command which is not a command of Hercules but a command of VM370 so attach 480 to DOSVS as 280 okay so now I take my tape and I attach it to virtual machine okay I got a message to the effect that the tape has been attached. I should have a similar message in the console here. Tape 280 attached, that's fine. So now the tape, the, the scratch tape is attached to the virtual machine and it should be possible to store modules on it and run the job. So now I type end of block or return and hope for the best, okay? Now it doesn't happen anything, which is good news. Is essentially compiling and that's good so apparently the job went fine uh, let's take a look at the output uh, what's the job number okay that's this so let's cut the paper 196 right there take some time because that's a big output I believe uh, 53 pages so let me go like this and then maybe unique. So it's, this is the output of the uh, pause BG. Okay. And then here's the job. So Capman. Mm -hmm. That's the first assembly. Assembly. Or assembly. No errors found, hopefully. And then the Fortran compile for the first module. Then the second assembly. Then the second compile. That's good. And then we mark the tape, rewind the tape, execute the librarian. Here are the two instructions, cattle R core cattle R tolly. Then I have this status report and no error messages whatsoever. So that that should be okay. All right, so let me close this and quit. So apparently, it did store the modules in the, the private library, but I would like to see that more precisely, okay? So to be sure that everything went fine. I have no error messages, so it should be okay, but let's confirm somehow that it, that it is okay, okay? So uh, I believe I have mounted the disk over here. Let me check. Okay, so you see that work 01 DASD of the OSVS, I have linked it to my uh, CMS user virtual machine and access it on file mode C. All right, so if I do a list data set of C, I can see my uh, private library, but I cannot use a command, or at least not this command, list data set, to look at the, the members inside this uh, private library. Okay. So if I want to look or list the members of a private library, there is a service program for that. It's called dserve. And I could create a job and submit this job to the OSVS to look what's in the, what's in the library and just confirm that my modules are there. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use the CMS DOS environment to check the content of that library here in this uh, virtual machine. So what I'm going to do, first of all, I'm going to link uh, the system residence disk of the OSVS, that's 360, read only. I'm going to access this guy on B, also Z, okay, so release Z, uh, query disk, 
Okay, that's fine. Now I have thus R33 on uh, uh, 34 on uh, B and I have work 01 on C. Okay, that's fine. And then I'm going to set DOS on B. This will activate the CMS DOS environment. If I do a query thus, I can see that the CMS DOS environment is available. And then I can type on my virtual machine here uh, commands that I would normally run in batch on this uh, DOS VS virtual machine here. So I want to look at the content of the library. Um, now on the DOS VS, I had to give the label and the assignment, and I will have to do that here too. So let me assign sysrlb to uh, 362, that's file mode C. Uh, oh, sorry, assign sysrlb to C. If I do list IO sys, I can see now that my relocatable has been assigned, that's fine. <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe I assign a sys IPT to, uh, to A and I assign a sys LST to the printer. Okay, that's good. And then <clears throat> I have to get the label of my library. So I have to write a DLBL, IJ sys RL. It's located on C. The name is a DAS VS private locatable. And it's connected with the logical unit sysrlb. And now the LBL, okay, I have the right label, I have the assignment, so I should be able now to use this dserve program, that's a service program for the directories. And I want the directory of the relocatable. And I want to uh, get the result on the terminal. And I can see now my private relocatable directory and I have these two uh, these two modules stored there. So my job work essentially and I'm all fine with that. Okay. So now I showed you how to compile and store the, the modules on a tape and then use the library and from the tape to store modules in this uh, private library. So the next step is to write a program that will call, let's say, Tali here and produce a result, okay? But I'm not gonna do this in this video, that's gonna be for the next one, because I want to do a little bit more than that and show you how to run this program, not only on DOSVS, but also in the CMS DOS environment, like we uh, did here. So, so uh, let me stop here for the moment and uh, see you next time. Okay? Bye bye.